Ezekiel chapter 23, verse 22. Therefore, O Holy Book, that's Jerusalem, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will raise up thy lovers against thee. If they're, they're your lovers, why are they rising up against thee? From whom thy mind is alienated. Not the heart, it's the mind. And the heart. And I will bring them against thee on every side. The Babylonians. All the Chaldeans. Now the Babylonians and Chaldeans are not the same. There, there's a difference. Like America, you would say there, there's the North and the South. They're Americans, but they're, they're split. Pekod, Shoah, Koa. And all the Assyrians with them. Assyrians the one who took Israel North into captivity. That's Nineveh. The Assyrians were a fierce army. And they would torture their victims, and enjoy it. All of them detest, I mean, desirable young men, captains and rulers, great lords and renowned. But the army is going to bring everybody they got. And all of them riding upon horses. They shall come against thee with chariots and wagons and wheels. That's going to enter chariots and wagons. And wheels. Chariots and wagons has wheels, but then there's wheels. I don't know. And with an assembly of people, United Nations Assembly, which shall set against the buckler, and that's like a belt buckle of, of the armor, and shield and hel helmet round about. They're ready for battle. I will set judgment before them. They're coming to judge. They're coming to apply judgment because you want to continue to sin. They shall judge thee, Jerusalem, according to their judgments. You know, every, well not every, but most civilizations except America, has a law against adultery. Most civilized nations have laws against stealing. And these nations who are vile and detestable and fierce of no mercy, You ought not to have been doing what you do when you have the law of God. You're violating our laws. <laughs> and Paul wrote to the Jews in Rome and said, they have a law of the Gentiles in their heart. They know not to do wrong. The Jews have it written in five books of Moses. So what God's doing is, you have the written law and the written words of God. You violated them. For those dead dogs who don't have it written down, they're going to come and charge you by their laws, their judgments, and which many agree to God in his law. I mean, I was amazed when you talk, you know, if you want any information, don't go to the media. Go, go to missionaries. King James Bible believing missionary. And some of the island nations, they actually have huts for women with their time of the month. When they, when they have, they are excluded from the population. Well, the law says that. 
And we read about earlier about men who have come unto menstruous women. Even the Gentiles didn't do that. The civilized. I will set my jealousy against thee. God's jealous. Because his people are given to lovers and, and loves of other things besides Jehovah. And they shall de deal fiercely with thee. They shall take away thy nose and thy ears. <laughs> Peter swung the sword and cut the ear off Mashusius. I think it was his name. I mean, if you run the two cross references, do you realize how fierce Peter was? Thy raiment shall fall by the sword. <laughs> War. They shall take thy sons and thy daughters and thy residue. Shall be devoured by fire. There's that fire again. And the Bible says our God is a consuming fire. They shall also strip thee of, of strip thee out of thy clothes. And it's funny because in World War One they developed a bomb. And they would find the Germans would find their men. In the foxholes, they would find the clothes of the men in the trees and a naked body on the ground. Those bombs, however they did it, actually blew the body out of their clothes. And when those bombs were used, all the soldiers were found naked. And take away thy fair jewels. Thus will I make thy lewdness to cease from thee. So the whole thing, the reason why I'm bringing this army, why you're bringing this judgment and this destruction, because I want you to repent and get right. And thy whoredom brought from the land of Egypt. That was a complete, God told him don't go back. So that thou shalt lift up thy eyes unto them Shall not lift up thy eyes. You're not going to look to them no more, nor remember Egypt anymore. Egypt's a type of world. For thus saith the Lord Behold, I will deliver thee into the hand of them whom thou hatest. Not just your lovers, but those you hate. And the hand of them whom thy mind is alienated. Don't get God angry. Don't do what God tells you not to do. And do what God tells you to do. Now I wrote a fa Facebook thing today. Say, so, you know, listen. I put forth the truth. I give you the chapter, verse, history, dates, and times. When I make a statement against Christmas and, and Easter, I am giving you scripture, and I am giving you the dates. I am giving all the factual. And I'm not going to force. I'm not going to go in your house and tear your Christmas tree down. I'm not going to go shoot Santa. I'm not going to go stomping your present. I'm not going to blow up your, your fireplace. You and I have the right to believe what we want to believe. Even if we're in a communist country, we can believe what we want to believe. But if I am correct and what is being done by Christians is a violation of God and his word, don't expect a revival. Don't expect God's blessing. But the lot of the church age, we're rich, we're, we're wonderful, we're great, how great we are. Where are those blessings coming from? They're coming from Satan because Jesus is standing outside. He's not involved. 
He's not there for happy birthday for Jesus. He's not there for the egg rolling. He's not there for... And then you got one man, Ezekiel, and you got one man, Jeremiah, standing up and preaching what you should be doing. And the people are not listening. I know how they feel. For thus saith Lord, I will deliver into the hand of them that thou hatest, into the hand of them that whom thou mind is alienated, who has turned you against God. Many Christians are alienated from God. They're saved, but they're alienated because they're committing whoredoms with the world and Satan in the flesh. And they're having a great time because Hebrews says the pleasures of sin for a moment. They got the pleasures. And they shall deal with thee hatefully. No mercy. And shall take away all thy labor. How much is actually being produced in America today? And shall leave thee naked and bare. They'll have nothing when they're done. Lamentations. they got to buy their own water. They've got their own wells in Israel and in Judah. And they go up to the war. And, and the Babylonian government says, okay, that will cost you... Two buckets, that will cost you this much. One bucket, it will cost you this much. Doesn't your average American get a water bill? And the nakedness of thy whoredom shall be discovered. At judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne judgment, all sins that are not under the blood of Jesus Christ will be made present for all to see. Husband will see how much you really loved your wife and children. Mother, we will actually see the motive and tensions of why you did or thought what you thought. That Christian that goes to church, we will be revealed by God. Why did he actually sit in that pew? Both thy lewdness and thy whoredom. That's not good words. I will do these things unto thee, Jerusalem. And it happens, Jeremiah. Because thou hast gone a whoring after the heathen. Again, when I speak about Christmas and Easter and that, they are heathen pagan rituals. You're either Jewish, you're Gentile, or you're a Christian. Either you're doing Christian things by God, you're doing Gentile, heathen things by the world. Or you're trying to go into that replacement theology of being a Jew. And because thou art polluted, there's pollution with their idols. So what do you do with a big church that all their foundation is on statues and beads and necklaces and crucifixes and candles? And it is an assembly group church that is polluting the world. And we just had a summit, or they're having a summit, about air pollution and water pollution and, you know, global warming. What about Roman Catholic, Catholic pollution? You realize I read the other day, and I can't find it now, that in, to a sense that the Pope said, there are some sins out there you don't really need to worry about. Wow. All of sin. Thou hast walked in the way of thy sister. That's a holia. 
Samaria, Israel. Therefore, I would give her cup into thy hand. Now, we're looking at a cup. And this is, this is important because there is a thing when Jesus is in the garden, he says to the Father, accept this cup. I've been told men like John R. Rice and others have said that that cup is death. That Jesus asked the Father, do I really have to die? That's their teaching. And when you go to cups like this, and I'm not talking about the cup that Joseph put in, in Benjamin's bag. I'm not talking about the cup of the baker from Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's presence. And I'm not talking about Nehemiah the cup bearer. I'm talking about when God speaks about a nation and a cup. And Mystery Babylon who has her cup. And with, with what we're reading now about the cup, that cup is judgment and sin. So the point is, when Jesus goes to the Father, he's asking God, Father, you don't realize how filthy sin is. I am pure. I am God. And you want me on that cross as, as, as the serpent was, was lifted up by Moses. You want me actually to, to somehow take a form of Satan. And you want me to bear the cup of every sin that has been committed by man. Father, that is filthy and vile. How filthy and vile is it at that moment when all our sins are put upon Jesus? The lights in heaven go out and the Father turns his head and to, re to the fact Jesus said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because now you have become sin. Who know no sin. So when we look at this kind of cup in the Bible and nations and people, we are looking at sin and judgment. Now, if you're going to say that cup is death, Israel nor does not die, unless you want to have a replacement theology. Because Israel's coming back. Except for Dan and Ephraim, of the 144,000, there are the Judean and Israel North tribes. Thus saith the Lord God, thou shalt drink of thy sister's cup deep and long. Why, is, why does Jerusalem get Israel sent? Because Jerusalem is doing the same. Thou shalt be laughed to scorn and mad in derision. It containeth much. And what are the sins? It's deep and large. I think the cup of Israel is a little bit bigger than other nations' cup. And we don't know when they've been filled. Nazis had a cup and it kept filling, kept filling, kept filling. And one day God said, okay, that's enough. It's over filling. You're done. You're gone. England was a, was a fierce, powerful nation all over the world. And when they turned their back on Israel and the Belfour Declaration, God said, okay, you're cut. And, Israel, and, and England hasn't been wiped off the planet yet, but that cup is still getting filled, and America has a cup. And that cup is being filled with blasphemy, 
That cup is being filled with abortion and murder, injustice, all the religions, all the religions is taught in the public school, but not God. I just read this. I read before before we're doing this study. There was a man convicted of, of, of killing a, a two-year-old, a three-year-old, his own child. He's in jail, and the judge will allow him to go sp spend Christmas with his family. Uh. If he kills somebody, was found guilty of killing somebody, he's supposed to be dead. He was not supposed to go nowhere but the graveyard. Put that in the cup. And every time the Supreme Court goes against the Word of God, the Holy Word of God, and they go against what God said, that's another coffin nail. That's another little level on the cup of, of America. That cup ain't death. It's judgment. And thou shalt be filled with drunkenness. And it's not drunkenness of, of alcohol. This is the drunkenness of the judgment of God and sorrow. Lamentations. With the cup of astonishment. How on earth did God do this to us? Be not deceived, God's not marked. What sort of man saw that he shall also reap. With the cup of thy sister Samaria. That's God's people, and they're going to drink judgment. What do you think the church is going to? What do you think America is going to? What do you think Africa? What do you think of China? Thou shalt even drink and suck it out. <laughs> You're going to get it all. Thou shalt break the shreds thereof. You're going to break the cup. And pluck off thy own breast. You ever notice that there's a lot of surgeries for women to use to remove their breasts because of cancers? There are women who have plastic surgery to remove their breasts and reform their breasts. For I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast forgotten me. There you go. Maybe we we'll read what Paul said, they'll be lovers their own self. Everything but thinking about God. We're rich, we're wonderful, we're great, we have no need for God. And cast me behind thy back. Get out of here, God. We'll have the Queen of Heaven. We'll have Esther. We don't want you. Because we can't have fun serving you. Oh, the onions and the leeks and the garlics of Egypt. Therefore hear thou also thy lewdness and thy whoredoms. I'm telling you, God is serious. And the Lord said moreover unto me, Son of man, wilt thou judge? Judge not, we should be judged. There's God telling one of his judge, Aholeah, that's Israel, and Aholeba, that's Jerusalem. Ye, yea, declare unto them their abominations. So when I preach on the streets, many times there'll be people go, judge not, we should be judged. God told me to do it. Cry aloud, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions. I don't like it. I don't care. That they have committed adultery. Name the sins. Blood is in their hands. Murder. With their idols they have committed adultery. That's a church. One church has got all these idols, aids to worship, and God says, this is adultery. Who caused their sons? Who they bear it unto me. 
to pass through the fire. That's Molech. They're burning their babies and their peop their children to Molech. Today, we don't even wait for the child to be born before we kill that child. You know, it's America, adultery, murder, idols, and the killing of children. You know, before God showed up to Moses, they were killing the children in Egypt. When Jesus was born at two years old, thereabouts, they were killing the children. We are killing the children in America. You better watch out. Maybe God will show up. I wonder how many children Adolf Hitler and the Nazis killed. Hebrews. You see, they put their children to the fire. And we already read, God said, I'll give you fire. I'll give you. I wouldn't surprise with the surgery of abortion if in America you'll find many people start dying from surgeries. More of this they have done unto me. They had defiled my sanctuary, the temple, in the same day. And have polluted my Sabbath. They're not obeying the law. They are killing. They're committing adultery. And they're going to the temple. Here's my sacrifice. Eli's sons are meeting the women at, at, at the entrance. And then go and commit fornication and adultery with the women. In the church of Corinth, there's a man having sexual relations with his father's wife. And then the lie of the scene, church, oh, how great we are, how wonderful we are, how great my pastor is, how great our church is. Do I hear a knock at the door? Never mind Satan's amen, amen in the preacher. Your church may be defiled rather than a blessing to God. For when they had slain their children to the idols, Molech, murder, they came the same day into my sanctuary to proclaim, I murdered my baby. How, how holy am I? I'm glad I'm not like that man over there, extortionist, murder and all. I'm so holy. I'm so great. We've got a great church service. we got a great pastor. God is so happy that I showed up today. Hallelujah for me. Oh, church is over? All right, give me the Budweiser. Give me the woman. Give me the lottery tickets. And let me cheat my, my employer. Thus they have done in the midst of my house. That's the temple. So the church is saying, hey, aren't you glad to be in the Lord's house today? And I don't want to have any unclean thing. You realize not everybody in that church is holy. Everybody's welcome. All come. How many sinners are sitting there unconfessed, unwashed, and then you pass the 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 Lord's Supper to them. And then you wonder why your church is dying off. And lo, lo, thus they have done in the midst of my house. Furthermore, that ye have sent for men to come from far. We three kings of Orient Point. Can't read the Bible at all. Unto whom a messenger was sent. Lo, they came. For whom thou didst wash thyself. You sent for these people. And then you, you, you take a shower. You, you get all fresh up. You don't do that for God. People come walk in the church and, and, and they don't, Lord God, uh, let me cleanse me. Let me not stand in the way of your work. And they, come, they even come in late. 
Paint is thy eyes. Can we go to Second Kings? Okay. Second Kings nine thirty. Look at the cross right. When Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face and tired her head and looked out the window. Well, you know, is it okay for a Christian to wear cosmetics? Look at the two references to makeup. Shall I name churches that have events of their church for the children and they face paint? We're going to have a face painting at, at our church, VBS. What's wrong with it? All right, you got a bunch of Jezebels running around. There it is. How did you miss that? Painted her face. We're going to have a face painting. It's okay. And then they'll turn around something. Have you ever heard anybody named Jezebel? No. But I've heard of people in your church have a face painting. I see women who have painted their eyes. What's going on here? Look at the two references. You can't miss that. Unless you want to do it because you want to have fun. What's Santa Claus say about face painting? What's Esther say about face painting when she won't cover up all her boobies? I hate to see that woman go into a store and buy a bra. What's your tame who's going to say about face painting? They're going to allow it. What's the Bible say about it? If you're going to face, you're likened to Jezebel. Have you read about Jezebel in the book of Revelation? You know she shows up there. You guys face painting, you know, you know, those Native, that's a Native American thing. They would paint their faces. In Africa, they paint their face. Africa, you're following an African. Uh -huh. Doesn't God tell you to get out of Africa? Get out of Egypt? Egyptians painted their faces. And deckest thyself with ornaments. Now, that's a perfect word for this. They're going to get all kinds of ornaments out and decorate the Christmas tree. Jeremiah chapter 10. Well, it's not the Christmas tree. Okay, fine. You want to reject the word of God? Reject it. That's up to you. Me? I'm going to say, hey, Jeremiah 10 is the Christmas tree. Paganism? I don't want it. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Some Christians, we got, as for me and our house, we're going to serve the Lord. And Esther and Tammuz and everything else. And we got a table of the Lord, we got a table of the devils, and God says, no, 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 no. You need a lot of batteries for those smoke detectors in heaven at the judgment seat of Christ. We're going to have a whole realm of angels going, flopping around, trying to get them to shut off. Thou saddest, or saddest, upon stately beds. Ooh, the best. And a table prepared before it. Table of devils. Whereupon thou hast set my incense and my oil. They are given to, to the heathen. They are given to the gods what belongs to God. You think he's pleased? Well, church. And I was in the church. It's Christmas time. And part of your offerings, we're going to give to missionaries overseas. And what we're going to do is we're going to fill a shoebox with crayons 
and socks and coloring books and all kinds of doodads that you can get at the dollar store, now $1.29. And my wife and I got yelled at because we filled the shoebox and we put King James Bibles in it and we got yelled at. We got rebuked. And they plucked those King James Bibles out of it. You see, we can give toys and entertainment to the, to the people overseas, but we can't give them God. That don't work. And a voice of a multitude being eased with her. With the men of the common sort were brought Sabine from the wilderness, which placed lace bracelets on their hands and beautiful crowns upon their head. Look, look, they're, they're, oh, they care so much. They just love us. Oh, they're so nice. Olstein has that great voice. He's got that great thing. Oh, tickle my fancy. <laughs> and down comes the axe. But Lord, didn't I give money to this church? Lord, didn't I sit in this congregation? Lord, wasn't I part of this ministry? Depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Look, they put bracelets and beautiful crowns upon their head. I want Jesus Christ to put a crown on my head. No one else. Then said I unto her that was old in adultery. He says, that's a long time. Will thou now commit whoredoms with her and she with them? They're not going to stop. Jeremiah tried. They don't. Then, yet, they went in unto her. You know that expression. And Joseph knew not Mary until she brought forth her first child. God, listen, they didn't have sexual, but they had sexual with the world and the devil and the heathen. There are Christians today and their churches in the bed of Satan. Smooching with Satan. And they think they're doing good. As they go unto a woman that playeth the harlot. So went they into Ahola, Israel. And Holaba, Jerusalem, the lewd women. So God likens... To what Jerusalem and, and, and Israel is doing. They like it to, you're just a prostitute. Here, give me money. Okay. And yet we read in Jeremiah or Ezekiel, we've already read the fact that God's people are giving the money to the heathen. We just say the oil and the incense, that belongs to God. They're giving it to the heathen. And the righteous men, they shall judge them after the manner of adulteresses. So there are men who are proper and right, and they're going to judge. Does not the Bible say, Know ye not, ye shall judge angels? I think our lost family, I think when, we, when they stand to judge at the great white throne judgment, I think we're going to step and say, Hey, listen. I witnessed to him this time. I gave him a gospel tract that time. I told him about Jesus this time. I invited him to the church that time. They came to my church this time. And after the manner of women that shed blood, oh, there's women killing. You know, I, I've been in prison ministry many years. You know the worst prison to go to is the women's prison. The men are not the men are not as bad as compared to the women. And I was at a prison that was both co-ed. There were male on one side, females on the other side. And I had the warden and the correction officer. You know, be thankful you're teaching the men. I said, Well, you don't want to deal with the women over there.
because they are adulteresses and blood is in their hands. Those are two sins, murder and adultery, that God had never a payment for the law to bring an offering. And there were some others, too. For thus saith the Lord God, I will bring up a company upon them. Very read the, the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, the, the, the Ninevites. And will give them to be removed and spoiled. Israel, Judah. We read that, Jeremiah. Lamentation. And the company shall stone them with stones. That's the capital punishment of the law. And dispatch them with their swords. War. They shall slay their sons and daughters. That's, hey, that's what you were doing anyway. And burn up their houses with fire. Why is COVID-19 killing all these children? Why are these children shooting all these children? Why are all these children getting killed at schools? Well, you're killing them at the abortion clinic. You're legalizing abortion. And then you got Christians who will say, well, we got gun rights. We have the right for guns. Okay. You got the right to kill people. You got the right for the guns to kill people. Be not deceived, God's not marked, whatsoever a man soweth that he shall also reap. And then when you add to the killings of the children and the guns and all that, add to the fact is they're teaching evolution in the schools, not creationism. They're not teaching the Bible. So evolution, the, the monkey with the greatest stick will kill the other monkeys to keep the banana tree. And the ape and the monkeys of Darwin is we'll kill whoever we want to kill so I can have that banana tree. Or whatever tree, the tree of knowledge of good and evil was. <laughs> dog eat dog. Survival of the fittest. It's being played out. Thus will I cause lewdness to cease out of the land. <laughs> that all women may be taught not to do after your lewdness. God wants you to put your sins to rest. He wants you to quit it. He wants you to repent of it. And he wants you to teach your children to do right. You're not going to teach your children right when you got in your assembly of your church. You got the heathen practices going on in your church. You can't get the world out of your children when you brought the world into church. And the great sermon would be for the church age today, there's death in the pot. And he's uh, and Elijah's not going to come and heal that heal that pot. He's dead. He's Jewish. That was a sign. And they shall recompense your lewdness upon you. Be not deceived, God's not mocked, whatsoever a man soeth, that he shall also reap. And you shall bear the sins of your idols. Ooh. You got that, Mr. Catholic, Mrs. Catholic? Your idol is a sin. And they'll tell you up and down, up and down, all around, it's an aid to worship. And ye shall know, here we go again, that I am the Lord God. How? Jerusalem gets sacked. Lamentations is written to say, hey, I'm God, I told you. 